This tiny little IC is the YX805. It's a 4-pin TO94 packaged solar charge controller, which cost me just 10 pence. So here we have a bit of a printout of a slightly blue and very Chinese data sheet. And over here we can see the IC itself, pins 1, 2, 3, 4, left to right. And over here, uh, the table which says that the pin number 1 is solar, pin number 2, VDD or battery, 3 is ground and 4 is LX. So this will actually control a light as well or a load. So this is really very much a fully fledged solar charge controller. Now down here is a couple of different circuits you can use for the uh, YX805, but let me get a bigger version of the one that I'm going to use. And here's the diagram. Now you can see that the YX805 just needs four external components. A battery, which you see here is a 1.25 nickel metal hard drive cell. Um, it needs a solar panel, um, an LED here on the output, and an inductor. And from this diagram, I think we can assume two things about the YX805. Firstly, like most solar charge controllers, I think we can assume there will be a diode here between the solar input and the battery connection. This diode prevents the battery discharging through the solar panel overnight and wasting power. But this means the solar panel I connect here must be uh, 2 volts or more to account for the voltage drop across that diode and it to still be able to charge that battery. Secondly, I'm going to assume there is some type of switch here between the LX pin and ground. This LED won't light up with just 1.25 volts from this battery, so that needs to be boosted up to something more like 3 volts to get it illuminated. So I'd imagine there's a MOSFET or a bipolar transistor here internally between those two pins. Okay, so the YX805 is a solar charge controller, but obviously it's designed for a very specific application, which is of course those solar garden lights you pick up from pound shops or dollar stores. Um, so I thought it'd be interesting to have a look and perhaps put one together. To build it, I'm going to have to think about my external components, and first I'm thinking about solar panels, and these are the few that I have uh, lying about in boxes that, as you can see, still have protective screens on them, haven't been used. Um, this one, I'm guessing, is a 2 volt, because there's four actual individual panels in here. They usually produce about half a volt each, and uh, apparently this one is 78.8 millimetres by 28.3, uh, obviously very specific there. This one actually has been written on, I don't know whether you can quite see that, it says 2V, so 2 volts, again we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 panels here, 100, is that 100 milliamps? It probably is, isn't it? And this one's 54 millimetres square, uh, but I think I'll probably go for this one because uh, as you can see, again, four distinct panels there so this again is a two volt panel uh, but it's already got wires on so uh, you know why wouldn't I use this one now I've also got a reasonable selection of inductors here in the shed uh, but which one do I use 100 micro henry 2.2 micro henry uh, a milli henry I don't know well I wouldn't know if I hadn't gone a bit further down that data sheet and found this table which shows the correlation between the inductor size here on the left hand side to the amount of current that you put through the LED so uh, well I'm not going to be putting too much through so I don't know 20 or 17 so if I've got a 47 or a 68 micro henry in here that will probably do me so I've got a couple of different inductor values to test that solar panel and then I think this is the only nickel metal hard dried cell that I can find at the moment in the shed. Um, it's a 1.2 volt, obviously nickel metal hard dried, um, 80 milliamp hours claimed on here. So uh, hopefully that will be uh, sufficient for now. So I've breadboarded this up, I've got a cell 
the YX805 and an LED and a couple of jumper wires just to uh, make this a bit more visible hopefully but the uh, cell is fully charged so I haven't attached the solar panel at the moment uh, I know that because well I've just charged it so uh, I've got three inductors in the background the 330 the 150 and the 47 micro Henry so uh, let's go for the lowest one first uh, between pins two and pins four well yes that's definitely lighting the LED so I'm boosting the 1.2 volts up to 3 volts or beyond to get that uh, white LED illuminated but it's a bit dim isn't it it's not great that um, I have put the camera on a fixed exposure so hopefully you will be able to see what's going on uh, between 2 and 4 again yeah I think that's a bit brighter isn't it so the 150 is definitely yeah i'm sure that is definitely brighter let's try the uh 47 uh and again i think that's brighter still isn't it i think that's more sort of the level of led i was expecting 47 micro henry's well how much current should be going through that led yeah, 47 micro Henry is 22 milliamps. Hmm, perhaps that's a bit much for this battery though. So, should we uh, settle for the one in the middle and go for 150 micro Henry's? Will that do? Yeah, it might do. That LED is quite a focused beam, isn't it? And perhaps for a garden light, I want something a bit wider. So I'll swap out that standard 5mm LED for this straw hat LED, which should be a bit wider and should cast light a bit. Oh, of course, I'll put it in the wrong way round. Yeah, should cast light a bit wider. Well, it is. It's not showing up terribly well, though, on this piece of paper. So I thought it would be interesting to have a look at the oscilloscope at the boost side of this circuit. And we can see here that the MOSFET is switching on and off to build up an electromagnetic field in that inductor which is then released and uh, produces a voltage about 3.2, 3.3 volts here uh, which then of course lights the diode, that energy dissipates through the diode and then we start the whole process again. And that's running at about 196 kilohertz. Now swapping in a 47 micro Henry inductor here has made an obvious difference to the shape of that waveform. There's two or if not three distinct uh, stages there, isn't there? Um, and uh, it's also changed the frequency to 182 kilohertz as well as increased the current and of course therefore the brightness of the LED. Well, I found that quite interesting. So I think I'm going to transfer this layout onto this piece of strip board and hopefully it's wide enough. But this strip board's quite nice when you've done something on a breadboard, uh, especially on one side of the breadboard, because, well, effectively you can just transfer it straight across. This has seen better days, but uh, I'm sure it will be absolutely fine. So I'm going to start soldering that up. Now, I am aligning this slightly different to how I had it on the breadboard, but pin 3 of the YX805 here uh, connects on this line to the negative side of the cell, uh, which means the positive is sat on this one, and, uh, well, that's not actually connected yet to pin 2, so I need to put a jumper in there because the uh, the battery is wider than the uh, legs on the uh, the YX805 which of course isn't really made for this 2.54 mil pitching here it's half of that so I've had to splay those legs but uh, yeah we'll make it work so there we have it that little jumper should give the power and then the inductor needs to go between pins 2 and pin 4 so that can go on this side of the IC on its end just like that. I should probably be soldering these as I go along really shouldn't I? So I think I'll use a new LED because if I do it this side oh no wrong way around that way there we go and I'll extend that right off the board like that so uh, yeah how am I going to solder 
this. I need to rearrange. So there we have it all in and uh, it's a little bit messy and actually this could have been considerably smaller couldn't it um, and perhaps there are some efficiencies to make with the size but anyway it's working and finished well I say finished I still need to uh, connect a solar panel don't I now I think I'm going to mount this into uh, well this box here uh, because well I have it it's got a clear front it's not too big although clearly it is too big um, and uh, nicely this particular solar panel the uh, 58 by 70 is exactly the same width it's not quite the same length but it's exactly the same width so uh, that's what i'm going with right so before i lose it or damage it i'm going to push this seal into the lid of the box and uh, hopefully this is going to keep most of the water out we'll see now I need to drill a hole in the back of this for the solar panel wires and uh, of course attach them to the corresponding point. Oh look, I've got two positives at this end and two negatives. So uh, yeah, there'll be some wires going under here and I'll just, I don't know, hot glue this on. And I think I can probably sacrifice a couple of DuPont cables, can't I? And uh, we'll just use the cable from these. That will be uh, sufficient, I think. Now with two holes carefully planned, measured, measured again, checked and measured a third time, and if you believe that you'll believe anything, um, hopefully that will line up quite nicely. So with the hot glue gun, well, reasonably warmed up, let's uh, put some hot glue on there and just, you know, coat it everywhere and hopefully that'll fold over and... Uh, yeah, it's not quite central, is it? But I think that'll do. I'm not too fussed here. I think that will be just fine. So with the solar panel now working, yep, yeah, that seems to be working very well. Uh, just a bit more hot glue in the bottom of here. Loads of hot glue. And uh, yeah, let's just plonk that in the middle. Or roughly the middle somewhere near the middle is fine there we go so there we have a homemade garden light which works with a solar panel which has got a bit of stringy glue on it and all thanks to the yx805 ic so i'll shove this outside and we'll see how long it lasts in the british winter yes well okay Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. So there it is on the garden fence. It probably won't stay exactly here for long, but yeah, it seems to throw out a bit of light. That's not too bad. 